Welcome to Bloom TV. So this is the August edition of Bloom TV. Uh, so it's our winter special. And um, I'm very, very excited to be able to introduce you to our special guest for tonight. Um, and that's Renee. So <laughs> Renee from Fluorescence. Um, so we're Hi. going to get to learn a lot more about Renee and um, her specific um, floral art, which is, which is quite unique and, and very, very different. Um, so we look forward to, uh, to yeah, learning more about, um, about that and sharing that with you. I'm um, also going to make uh, a small posy tonight. And, um, and as always, we have some giveaways. So welcome to all our Bloomers Club members. Um, and our Butters Club members as well. Um, so one of the things that we always do on Bloom TV, for those who haven't um, joined us before, is we always have giveaways and we always have prizes and, and also a Q&A as well. So the idea of Bloom TV um, is that we can share with you our love of flowers um, and all, all things floral art, as you'll get to see tonight. Um, but also that we get to answer some questions that you might have around flowers, flower arranging or floristry in general as well. So we'll have a, an opportunity for you to answer or ask any questions and we'll answer them live. Um, if you're watching this post uh, the live event, um, then please still comment and, and post your questions and we'll, we'll get to answering them as well. So, um, so back to Renee. Um, so welcome. Thank you. And thank you so much for coming back to Bloom College. And you've been here as a guest with us before, but yes, not on Bloom right. TV. That's right. <laughs> um, and as a guest in, in some of our workshops. Yeah, that's right. Um, now, you're not a florist, but you are a floral artist. Yes, that's and right. And one of a very different kind, and, um, and one that will be of most interest to our, um, our community of flower lovers as well. So you've brought some of your beautiful artwork with, with you tonight mm -hmm. um, to share with us. And this is one of my favourite pieces, this one. It's absolutely magnificent. Thank you. Um, and we've got a, a smaller framed one here as well. Yeah, this is actually a Kudamundra wattle. Wow. Um, which, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't have the traditional wattle look about it, but when, mm. when the Kudamundra wattle comes into bloom, it goes this beautiful purpley blue colour. So um, and so that's, that's what you're seeing in this one here. Yeah. Yeah. And so you freeze the flowers and then photograph them. Yeah, that's right. So um, I guess before we go to that though, with that mm. process and, and how that works, um, without all, all, all the detail and all your secrets. Yes. <laughs> um, but what sort of inspired you um, to move from the, your previous careers, which you can tell us a little bit about as well, yep. into what you're doing now? Sure. Um, so I um, have spent a really um, big part of my career as a marketer. Um, and I guess I um, hit, hit a stage that was probably about 10 years into my career, and I think a lot of people can relate to this. Um, and I thought, I, I don't feel like I'm pursuing my passion anymore. Um, and um, as it so happened, I um, was made redundant um, right. from the job that actually brought me um, to Melbourne from Sydney. Um, and I knew I already loved it in Melbourne. I knew I wanted to stay. Um, so I took that opportunity to um, study interior design um, back at university um, and, and retrain. And what I realised as I was going through that process was um, I really enjoy um, the design elements yeah. of interior design, um, but I didn't have any aspirations to go and work in a big design firm. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't interested in working on commercial client projects. Sure. Um, I was much more residential focused. Um, as it so happened, I was coming to the end of my um, studies and um, I um, collaborated with a photographer I'd worked with before and, um, and I had this idea around um, wanting to freeze flowers. Now, I'll tell you maybe a little bit down the track as to yeah. how I come up with this idea. Right. Um, but that, it just sort of um, organically happened from there. You know, mm. there wasn't any golden aha moment where I was, sure. you know, quitting my job and, you yeah. know, running off to, to pursue my passion. It was much more organic. I kind of think of it like um, the scales tipping. Mm. You know, um, I was tinkering with the idea yeah. and then it became a little bit more um, fleshed out. Um, to where it is today and that is um, what I consider yeah. probably fully fleshed out yes um, yeah. and then you know it's just about now the love of continuing to experiment with this idea mm -hmm. as far as I can take it because Fabulous. I have a thousand and one ways I, I can see yeah. this going in the future <laughs> so it's just naturally evolving <laughs> and just growing yeah. and, absolutely and, um, yeah becoming bigger as, it, as you're going on. It's that's fabulous. exactly right. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> and that's how many of our career change course students come about actually, like very similar story um, and then just slowly transition into floristry rather than 
just jumping all in. It's a slow evolution and, and yeah, yeah, and then all of a sudden they've got this this business that's evolved. I think it's a much smarter mm. way of doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, there's um, I think it's a very romantic notion mm. <laughs> just to say I'm going to quit my job and now I'm going to become a whatever Mm. um but in reality you know we all have bills to pay um and um and there's also maybe a a certain quality of life that you become accustomed to when you earn a full-time wage so to throw that all away for um you know i became a student again it was probably the most difficult couple of years of my life Mm. um (laughs) um, and yeah and i just actually don't think it needs to be quite that difficult. difficult um and i think if you can um you know, stay in what you're doing or, um, you know, find another way to earn a really solid income yeah. while you pursue this passion. Um, recognising that you're not going to be good at your passion in the beginning as well. Mm. So your opportunity to earn is actually quite limited in the beginning yes. because you're a junior again. Yes. <laughs> you're not, you know, you're not sort of really good at what you do. You're not best, you know, in your field or, yes. you know, any of those sort of terms. So um, that's why I think it's a great idea just yeah. to, just slowly, slowly, I know it's mm. the opposite of what you want to do, but yeah. <laughs> it really does work yeah. um, because there's peace of mind in that. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, it just doesn't need to be any more stressful than what it is. No, so that's you can right. take away <laughs> some of those stresses and fabulous. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Excellent. And so, um, so you do work with, with florists? Mm-hmm. Um, and have you um, have you photographed or f- firstly frozen I should say <laughs> and then photographed many um, wedding bouquets or is that something that you're you're wanting to do more? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, the idea around um, taking people's uh, wedding flowers and being able to create bespoke pieces of art for them mm. is something that's only come about in the last six months for me. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't an avenue I was actually pursuing and I think this is one of the great ways that the universe keeps throwing you opportunities that mm. you, you're not even um, aware of. Yes. Um, because to date, a lot of my clients have been interior designers creating um, this bespoke piece of artwork for, for the, the newlyweds and oh, then they're able to you know put that in their home and use that as a, a bit of a recognition for what mm-hmm. um, their wedding day was um, and a much more mm-hmm. modern take on yeah. um, preserving the bridal flowers yeah. <laughs> because you spend so much time picking them out mm-hmm. um, and then they're gone in a day yes. you know mm-hmm. so um, this is another way of preserving that memory yeah it's a yeah. really beautiful way of doing it too thank you yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah to have a, a piece of art like this in, in your home yeah um, but for it to have so much meaning and so much memory attached to it as well I think it's just a beautiful thing yeah that's right and so um, you've learned a lot also about um, you know the emotions that are carried um, through flowers and, and and all of that the meaning I think that has come from it mm. um, is there any sort of standout that you can remember from a client that's kind of that you're allowed to share I guess <laughs> yeah um, look I think um, well to take a step back I guess Um, When I was coming, um, this idea came to me. It came Mm. about because I was looking for um, floral artwork for my walls that represented... um, I've lived overseas in a couple of countries. Yeah, great. Um, And so I'd lived in Singapore uh, for a couple of years. And, of course, everyone knows the flowers in Singapore are insane. Yes. And then um, I lived in Greece for a couple of years as well. Um, And so I was looking for some bougainvilleas um, that would best represent um, my time living there. Um, So it actually can be a little bit generic, um, what you would find. It's just to take a picture of an orchid to represent Singapore or, you know, Mm -hmm. some bougainvilleas for for Greece. Um, And so I was toying around this idea of, well, how how do I preserve the memory of my time there? And I got onto this idea of ice as a natural preservation tool. Um, and so I, I just started experimenting with that. Um, so that's sort of how the idea came about. Um, and then from there, that's sort of what I encouraged my clients to do. Mm-hmm. So they may have a favourite flower that um, connects them to a, a place, the way that Bougainvilliers did for me in Greece, because um, I have a really like, big Greek family back <laughs> over in Greece, so it reminds yeah. me of my times back there. Right. Um, you know, but for other people, um, it might be... Um, you know, a summer that they spent somewhere sure. or a little romantic liaison they had, you yeah. know. <laughs> um, there's a connection to flowers, I think, mm. for people in a multitude of ways yes. um, that is unique to them. And yeah, so that's sure. ultimately what I'm looking to capture if I create mm. something bespoke for them is yeah. um, how can I capture the essence of, of this memory of yours mm. um, in ice? 
That's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. So you saw it. Yeah. You found it as a need for yourself first, and yeah. then realised, well, hey, this is a need of other people's as well. That's so, right. Yeah. Um, and made it. Um, yeah. Brought it to fruition for them as well. Yeah. So and it's, it's unique. And I think totally. that really appeals to me as the you know the interior designer that didn't end up going and doing interior design yeah. <laughs> that still really resonates with me though because mm. I don't want to mimic someone else's idea sure um, I wanted yeah. to create something totally unique and when this came to me mm. I didn't know if it was going to work yeah you know and I think this is um, true of all designers whether you're floral or interior or, or whatnot it's um, it's through experimentation and through the design process mm. that you come out the other side with something truly unique yes it's not um, this is certainly not scrolling through Instagram. No. Um, I'm very guilty of losing far too many hours on Instagram. Yeah. But I, I feel like I come out of it a little bit, um, uh, I don't know, um, deficient mm. in unique ideas because mm. I've actually just seen so much of the same. Yes. Um, anyway, so look, that's, that's sort yeah. of how I came about with something yeah. that I felt to be truly unique um, that I it wanted totally to pursue. Is. Yeah, mm. that's the only way I can actually feel passionate about it is if sure. it's unique to me yes um yeah, yeah. so yeah, then right. here we are yeah so you've ended up decorating people's homes in, <laughs> in another way, way. that's yeah. right and that's the interior so designers are actually now my clients yeah <laughs> you know so they could have been my colleagues but now they're my clients mm. is sort of how i see it that's really great yeah um and so um I, I see that there's a great opening obviously to be able to work with more and more florists as well mm -hmm. um particularly those who do wedding flowers yeah um but you know, it's not just weddings. Um, there's so many different uh, opportunities, I would imagine. But um, particularly um, with uh, with brides yeah. uh, for wedding bouquets. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that would be brilliant. Yeah. Well, yeah. the thing the thing, of course, with weddings is um, there's so much investment mm -hmm. of time and energy and emotion yes. into um, that day. But of course, wanting to remember that and capture that um, mm. is really key. Yeah. Um, I've actually had the honour of being asked to freeze some. Um, the flowers um, for my grandmother when she passed away. Oh wow! Um, that was just another way of, of preserving that that memory. Yes. Um, but mm -hmm. um, you know, predominantly it is about the celebratory moments. Yes. Um, you know, like if, if you have a christening or you you know yeah. um, a child's first birthday or all those sorts of things. Yes. That's an alternate way of. Um, Sure. being able to capture that yeah. um, and the thing I like about brides is they really have gone to great lengths to select the colour scheme that's going to work mm. um, so you have a, such a great range of things to choose from because mm. um, I certainly don't take someone's bridal flowers home and just go you know plonk that there's the bouquet in yeah. ice it doesn't work that way sure. and I don't go too much into the process but yeah. um, uh, just because I need to keep it on the down low. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but um, it just it doesn't quite work that way. Sure. Like freezing is um, a lot more intricate than you could ever begin to imagine. Mm. Um, big learning, learning process that very you've taken big, a lot of time to go through. Very big. Mm. I have thrown out more blocks than I have yeah. um, in any way pho photographed or um, used. So sure. um, it's been a, a long learning curve. Yes. Um, but yes, it's, um, it's exciting because no mm. two blocks are the same. Yeah. You will never get ice freezing the same way twice, and that's wow. why you get really interesting bits of detail mm. through it. Um, yeah, and it's it's exciting in that regard. It is, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, and so I imagine that you've also discovered that there are some flowers that work and, and there are other varieties that don't work would that be true yes yeah um i have a love-hate relationship with poppies <laughs> <laughs> as i'm sure yeah. a lot of people can um appreciate yes um they're just um so fine <laughs> um i have um had five attempts now at um uh, each time I freeze, I freeze a lot of blocks of sure. the same thing. Um, and I had five attempts before I managed to get one shot of a poppy wow. um, that just hadn't sort of disintegrated or gone yeah. brown before it froze. Um, so that was something I started experimenting in itself and mm. saying, well, clearly there's some flowers that are going to be a lot more sensitive than others. Mm. Um, and there's no general rule about it. Like yeah. magnolias, you know, mm. that also really annoying me right now. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I've had to do a lot of experimentation to say, yeah, okay, sure. well, how do I make sure that these freeze before they mm. um, uh, before they go brown? Yeah, you know. Yeah. 
sometimes it's just a trial and testing. It's a lot of trial and error. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. all great design yeah. <laughs> ideas, there's uh, a design yeah. process you go through there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. So, awesome. um, yeah, Poppy's Magnolias right now, not, yeah. not my friends. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, it is spring season, mm. and um, I, um, I don't, my dilemma right now is I have a freezer full of frozen yeah. um, blooms, and um, I'm coming into spring, and mm. I just don't have any more freezing space. Yeah, sure. So I either buy another freezer, yeah. <laughs> or I, I need to pull some all nighters yeah. <laughs> to, to clear the freezer out. So. Is that to get them photographed? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 So um, yeah. My first world problem right now is: yeah. Do I buy another freezer, <laughs> or do I, um, you know, do I sort of spend the next um, thirty-six hours <laughs> freezing? Because yeah. uh, it seems like spring has just hit me all of a sudden, and yeah. I just I can't keep up with uh, the amount of blooms mm. that are coming in. Of course, you know, I do it now, or I do it in another twelve months. Yeah, it's, sure. You know, <laughs> got to get on with it. And this gorgeous mm. um, blossom here mm -hmm. is that from last spring? That was from last spring. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. So um, beautiful. Yeah, thank you. I think um, I think it's really important also to to know that when you're looking to change careers, you don't have to be the expert in everything. And mm -hmm. I should point out that I'm not a photographer first. Yes. Um, you know, I'm very much the floral artist first. I'm the designer first. I'm the experimenter. I'm the you know. Mm. Um, the trial and error, if that's a thing. <laughs> the <scientist. laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, you know, and I, I had a lot of, um, I guess, knowledge gaps before I came into this, and so I, I would use a, a photographer to help me hone my photography skills, and mm. I would use um, a graphic designer to help me create my brochures, and um, you know, and that sort of thing. Um, I think it's. Um, we try to do it all ourselves yeah. and then we end up doing nothing very well. I was very True. guilty of that. Um, so I just wanted to point that out because mm. this was um, the culmination of a collaboration I did with yeah, um, right. a photographer and I think we worked really well together to get to that final outcome. Yeah, it's fabulous. Mm. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. So it's very exciting. <laughs> um, so I thought we might throw to some questions. Yeah, see fantastic. If, um, see if there's anybody, anyone. If you have any questions, please post them into the comments. And then um, as we see them pop up, we'll read them out. Um, one of the things I wanted to do is make a small posy okay. um, and give to you to take home and see if you can freeze it. Sure, I would love to. Yeah, so we'd absolutely. Love to see the um, end result then absolutely. From, from a posy. Yes, into... I would be very excited to do that. That would be great. Okay, great. excellent. Wonderful. Well, How so big are we actually. talking here? Yeah, you just make a little one. Okay. Little one. Some yeah. of them can take up to a week to freeze, yeah. depending on how big yeah, they go. Right. Right. <laughs> After hearing I'll clear some space. <laughs> I'll make a really small one. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds right. great. Okay, Terrific. lovely. Um, I also wanted to show everybody as well, um, this is the most giant... Isn't it? Yes. This is silver suede for those who aren't aware of what it is, and it's giant. Um, we certainly never get stems like this, and the flower fairies dropped it off during the weekend, so we don't know where it came from. But if you do know where it came from, if you were in our classroom over the weekend and you um, bought that and gave that to us, then thank you, <laughs> um, and we will certainly have a gift for you if if it was you. Um, but I just wanted to point it out because it's just it's just magnificent. So I have got a smaller piece here because um, that would be a big block of ice itself, wouldn't it? A beautiful um, piece, but uh, yeah, yeah, that would definitely be a seven-day freeze job. <laughs> <laughs> so I might just cut some of it down slightly. And Bridie, if you wouldn't mind passing me the um, the hellebore and also. Um, the Blushing Bride oh, yeah. roll yeah. would be really yes. nice. Absolutely. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. It's beautiful. Yeah, gorgeous, the Blushing Bride. So they're part of the, um, the um, Pretty family. Yes. Yeah. I didn't know that, actually. Oh, good. And it's Hellebore. Just so pretty, mm. and um, they really are one of winter's gifts, mm. and they're also known as winter's rose as well, mm. which is a lovely name for them. They look quite uh, precious, the hellebores. Yeah, have you ever, yeah. Um, tried to I can't those? say I have attempted it. Sorry, this is. <laughs> yeah, I see. I'm going to have to put my little secret <laughs> yeah. um, process in place for these guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what I'm told is that, or what I've read, is that when they're picked 
Um, when they're picked like this, see how there's no little pollen attached on the inside there? Oh, yeah. As opposed to this friend with pollen. Now, when they're picked from the bush like this, they will hold really well and so they won't droop. Um, as opposed to with the pollen, they're more likely to droop. And um, so we did test it with this bunch and these guys did droop. But after a nice little cut, they picked up again and were really happy yeah. after being cut and, and having a good drink. So, um, yeah, so that's made them happy and we can still use them. And they're just beautiful colours, you know. Mm, gorgeous There's a colours. detail in that middle. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. So, um, now I failed to tell people what the prizes were for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so these are going to be based on um, the best questions that will come through. Now, um, and these can be post as well, so don't miss out if you're not live. Um, now, one of the prizes is a, a workshop and it's on, let me check my notes, it is on Wednesday the 15th. So that's not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, the 15th of August. And um, it's called Pretty in Pink. It's one of our most popular workshops that we hold. Um, now you came to the yoga. I did. I came to the yoga, to and, flowers. yoga and flowers workshop, which yeah. I think was the first one. It was. Right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And that was a lot of fun. Good. Your next one's in a couple of weeks, is it? Um, three or four weeks? We should October, be. Remember? October. The yoga one. Yeah. October is around the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly. It is. Yeah. It is. It is. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that, that will be coming up. Um, and we'll make sure we have um, make sure we have some prizes for that as well. Um, so, but the prizes tonight, uh, as I said, for the Pretty in Pink workshop mm -hmm. on, um, now you need to be able to attend to it though. Um, if you can't attend, then maybe you can send a friend <laughs> or a family member. Um, now I'm cutting these stems in this little posy quite short because I know where they're going. So they don't need, <laughs> doesn't really matter too much if they're not, um, if they're not too water sourced. Um, what I just want to make sure that I do is not make it too big um, so that it can't then fit in your freezer. <laughs> um, and the second prize is a um, three month subscription to our Bloomers Club. So um, I'm not sure if you've heard of our Bloomers Club, Renee. No. Um, so our Bloomers Club is that we have um, members. So. Um, staunch flower lovers join the Bloomers Club <laughs> and, um, and it is also um, particularly good for those who are um, looking at it as a career or maybe already in it as a career and just wanting more guidance and, and advice and um, so we have a private Facebook group where um, questions are answered yeah. and, um, and then we also have uh, monthly sessions where I demonstrate and again it's very similar to this process actually um, however um, it's just a little bit more advanced hmm. okay. yeah that sounds great yeah so we answer lots of industry questions mm -hmm. um, that people might have okay so I'm just going to finish that off by removing some of those that are going to sit out a little bit too far and then adding some in a little bit tighter I think it would be nice as a, a flower girl. Yeah. A little posy, maybe. Yeah. I have to say, after doing that yoga and flower workshop, you know, and you were teaching us how to sort of, you know, place them around. Oh, I yes. left and I, I just had this, I was like, I don't know how florists do it. You know, oh, your like, arm. yeah, <laughs> your arm, just because the weight of the flowers, you know, especially with the bigger bouquets, is just insane. Mm. Yes, <laughs> it does take its toll. After a while. <laughs> um, and definitely um, going to the gym and doing some arm weights yeah. <laughs> helps. Pays off, <laughs> that's for sure. Okay, so I'm just going to tie that off with some twine. Um, oh, that's what I had a, a question for you around with the um, bridal bouquet mm. that you've um, that you've frozen. Mm -hmm. um, 
Do you just remove the ribbon or like if there's ribbon attached to them? Because that wouldn't, that wouldn't freeze well or wouldn't look great anyway. No, I think the thing about it being frozen in ice is obviously it, it goes through, um, it's not frozen instantaneously. Mm. So there's this sort of organic, you know, movement that happens to the flower. Mm. Um, but the same happens to ribbon. And so you just yeah. don't know where it's going to end up. <laughs> um, and so it's fine with flowers because they're kind of contained to the stem. But yeah. with a, a long ribbon, it could just end up being quite... Yeah. So yes, I did remove them. Yes. Um, though I um, I would like to experiment with um, putting a little um, butterfly onto onto one of the oh, petals. Yeah, that would be cute. Um, so yeah, there's a thousand one ideas, but I would like yeah. to see what that looks like. Yeah. Um, be because great. I think that would really be really special. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, Especially good. for something like this, you know, just it's a little something, not to yeah. overshadow the actual flower itself, but sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's lovely. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, um, let's talk about how people can find you, particularly, I think, florists, if they've, um, you know, they've got a bride and they want mm -hmm. to then um, pass on your details because um, sometimes, or quite often, mm -hmm. a bride will ask, you know, can they get their flowers preserved or how mm -hmm. can they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that florists would love a new and such beautiful way to be able to offer um, that to their brides. So, um, is social media or your website the best contact for you? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I mean, obviously, I'm on Instagram, yes. um, like the rest of the world. Um, mm -hmm. But I think if you have a specific client in particular, getting in touch through the website is the best way to go. Sure. Um, and while you can pass my details along, mm -hmm. um, I think the recommendation that comes from a florist is sometimes yeah. the best. Um, uh, how do I say it? push, I guess, sure. um, down a particular direction because there's yeah. the trust associated with that. Absolutely. Um, so that's why I've, I've started working quite a lot with florists directly yeah. um, and then, you know, in some way share um, yeah. the margin of, of what I'm oh, wow. doing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. so well. it's almost like a finder's yeah. fee, if I can call yeah, it that, sure. okay. <laughs> um, oh, with florists. It's a for so them, isn't it? It is. So if the yeah. client goes ahead and purchases one of my packages, yeah, wow. um, and that includes going out to the venue, picking the flowers up, taking them home that night, yeah, right. um, and and then preserving them, because uh, of course I need to get my hands on the flowers well, pretty quickly. Pretty quickly yeah. <laughs> um, then, yes, then th there's a package that I offer that um, benefits both the florist um, oh, as, as well as their client. Oh, well done. Yeah. Excellent. So certainly That's through the website service. would be yeah. the, the best way to go. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. All right. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me along. I'm You're most very welcome. impressed. I can't actually wait to, to freeze yeah, this. Yeah, we look forward it's to absolutely um, beautiful. seeing the result of that and um, yeah, how they'll disperse in the water as they're pulled apart. That's right, yeah. See how they go. Yeah. Oh, this will be absolutely beautiful. These blushing brides are going to be so stunning. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Especially because they're all shot macro. Mm. And you can you can see every detail. fine hair that comes yeah. off. It's it's really yeah, that'll be beautiful. The texture's mm. great. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks Thank so, you so much for having much. me. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. So um make sure that you now follow um fluorescence. So it's at fluorescence. And we'll also put that down into um, the comment section as well so that um, you can uh, follow Renee and see her beautiful work and then, of course, contact her. Um, I mean, I'm sure you probably want a piece for your home anyway, but you can also refer to your clients um, and friends and family as well. Um, one of the things I wanted to, uh, to just point out as well, I forgot to mention earlier, was that I'm um, wearing my very new apron, which... Um, I'm proud to say it was a, a, a gift and um, that's from Floral Acts of Kindness and uh, I know many of you know Isabel. Uh, Isabel is the founder of Floral Acts of Kindness and um, for those who don't know Floral Acts of Kindness, uh, it's a charity that's been put together um, and I'm on the committee with some other Bloom College graduates and what we do is we um, rescue, I guess, flowers from wholesalers and they're flowers that would otherwise end up in the bin and just because they're not sellable to florists or flower sellers. However, they do still have a, a reasonable longevity and at least a good enough lifespan that we can um, show volunteers how to arrange them 
and then they deliver them to nursing homes across Melbourne um, to people who otherwise wouldn't receive flowers. So it's a really beautiful exactly. thing. Um, it's, it's a gorgeous thing to be part of. And, um, and, and Isabel, myself, um, Liz and the rest of the committee are slowly putting this together um, on the side. And so it does take time and effort. And so um, one of the things I wanted to throw out there to our beautiful community of people is that we're looking for a website develop developer at the moment. So someone who is very caring and generous with their time and would be um, willing to help us put together a website that we um, so so uh, much need to be able to move forward with the charity. So if you know anyone or you are a website developer um, that would be willing to, to give your time and help, then please contact us at Bloom College. Um, we would love to hear from you. So um, thanks very much for joining us tonight. We'll see you for the September Bloom TV and we will um, check any comments and questions and let you know the winners in the comments on Facebook. So um, thanks so much for joining us. Have I forgotten anything, Amanda? What's, how do they win the prize? Um, how do they win the prize yeah. is the um, best, best questions and comments. The best questions. Yes, you thank you. Yes, <laughs> no, that's how we, we have done it in the past. <laughs> Slight change tonight, Great. mixing it up. Sorry. Alrighty, so thank you so much for joining us and thanks for joining us here as well, Bridie. And um, thank you for <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Renee. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next month. Thanks. Mm -hmm. See ya. Bye.